Welcome everyone to another episode of Between Two Brokers. Today we have special guest Joey Welling of Ethos <laughs> Ethos <laughs> Athletic. <laughs> No, I like the mess up. Come on. <laughs> Ethos. <laughs> um, we have special guest Joey Welling from Ethos Athletic Club here in Charleston. You're probably working on a couple other things if I know uh, how I think you are. But welcome, Joey. And um, let's get right into it. We have a lot of questions for you. Yeah, thank you for um, the opportunity of being here. Yeah. So you have built a very successful gym and business here in Charleston. And that's, we, we focus on lo local entrepreneurs here on the podcast. So um, I think you're from Charleston, but tell yes. us a little bit about your background and your dream to create what you have created. Tell us about your cult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my about to be 37th year in Charleston. <laughs> so born and raised, very lucky and fortunate of that. And then um, this is about to be my 18th or 19th year in the fitness business. Wow. And like our mutual friend, Jerry. Yeah. Um, he knew me when I was 18 years old, just starting at a, when I was at the Citadel and my summer job was working at a gym downtown. You could cool. pass for Jerry's son. Yeah, you could. I've, we've had that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure. When we sit together like, oh, father, son, lunch. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Dine with me for the rest of my life. If I look, <laughs> if I look like Jerry at his age or oh half that good, I'll be happy. What a stud. He's so yes. dreamy. Big daddy. So, um, yeah, it's been 18, 19 years in the gym business. And I actually had some, a really cool job learning how to do hit style training group classes. And it took me to Atlanta and New York and a little bit in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Um, so being a part of those big cities and seeing the fitness craze, in those big cities um, gave me a ton of inspiration and ideas for my hometown. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the way a lot of the ideas came, came about. So, mm -hmm. so you just knew that it was, we didn't have it here and you wanted it here probably for yourself and your friends, right? Yeah. Selfishly. But it, it I mean, I always envisioned even 18 years ago because I was an athlete, I played baseball at Citadel. I loved training athletes and it clicked with me average joes is which what i am now and we're we're not professional athletes is you, we all want to train like an athlete we may not put up the numbers that they're putting up but we want to train we want to jump around do cool things do cool exercises like them so i just thought in my head i'm i go i want this create this facility one day that's big enough and cool enough to where um the average Joe can come into the gym, work out on their own, personal training. Then I also wanted to create cool enough group classes. Um, that way, mom and dad could pop in for their 45-minute session like they do at Orange Theory or something like that. And then I also wanted a yogi to be in the same facility as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And then, But the coolest thing is watching, we have some really young, from 8 years old to 15-year-old kids that are in there, and they're training next to some... NBA players or major league baseball players that are in the off season. And that's mm -hmm. just so cool to see all of that happening under one roof. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's an absolute dream and it's better than I ever imagined it being. That's awesome. So I don't know anything about you, but I do know the space and I'm, I know it couldn't have been an inexpensive build out. What's it like no. to go to somebody and ask them for money to invest in your dream? It's, it's something, um, and I don't know how to explain it. it. It's a very hard thing to do. You got to find an investor that is also passionate. Cause we also went to multiple banks and they said, no, 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 no. Um, and we just got denied and they didn't see the idea. They didn't see the vision. And this all happened also when I was going to these people, it was the summer of COVID. 2020. Yeah. We signed the lease on, on Halloween of 2020. So at that point, we were sort of inching our way out of COVID. But when all the asking was going on and telling people about the idea and vision, you know the craze that was going on there was Peloton in yep. online classes. Yep. And people were saying, oh, the gym business is Dead. it's never going to come back and mm -hmm. things like that. And me in my head, I'm talking to these investors um, in these banks, and I'm sitting there going, no, like, Human beings are social beings. These people want to work out with each other. They're going to want to be around each other again. And, and that's what makes it fun. And the, the, 
the cult, the culture, like that's where it comes from is having all these cool people that have different jobs um, and live in different areas or from different cities and things like that. And they're all work. They have one mindset of just sweating together. Mm -hmm. And was it just like you innately knew how to do this? You taught yourself or did you have anybody like saying, this is what you got to go in and say, this is how you got to pitch somebody. Or did you just learn by trying? I've listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, yeah. I've read a lot of stories. Some like one of my favorite magazines is Entrepreneur Magazine, and it just talks about those conversations. And a lot of entrepreneurs that said, "Oh, like the two guys, like Brian Chesky, one of the founders of Airbnb, lived off his credit card for two years." And um, but no, it was I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah, it, it was more just explaining. To me, I think if you're passionate about it and you keep reaching out to people and you, you're you going to find somebody that's just as passionate about it and wants to give you a chance, you got to keep knocking on doors and you're going to get a lot of no's. Was um, there a point when you're like, all right, fuck it? It was like, because I had other ideas. I was yeah. like, well, what if we do an outdoor gym, mm-hmm. like an all outside gym? And I think that building was like the 13th building that I had looked at. And I looked at that building two times before and said, no way it's too big. I said, this is not going to work here. And I even had a couple of mentors that would come in and and they're like, no, this isn't going to work. Um, but then the more I spaced it out and thought about the, um, the architecture behind it of this room's going to be this big. All right. It's not that big. If we do a cafe and the bathrooms are really luxe and nice. And so, yeah, it, it just all seemed to work together. And I think the way the world changed with the pandemic gave us a huge boost. We couldn't have opened at a more perfect time because that was when people were starting to get off the Peloton and like, all right, I can't wait to be around other people in a classroom again. Mm-hmm. So I love the cafe out front. That's like. That helped too Ooh, with the kiss. pandemic. Now, <laughs> now people sit out there and work for My husband eight says hours. You got sushi out there now. <laughs> yes, right, right across Brilliant. the street. <laughs> Aaron likes a gym for the food. Okay, um, <laughs> so why do you think that you're an entrepreneur? I, I don't know if I would call myself an entrepreneur. This isn't to to me. It's I guess maybe you do, but it, it's. It's not some genius idea that I or the team came up with. I think it's a lack of genius. I think it means you're nuts. Yeah. (laughs) I'm totally nuts. A a little bit. (laughs) Yes. You could look at it that way is, but what a lot of people forget until Lululemon came around who made yoga pants cool. And then they created yoga studios and CrossFit and Orange Theory. What you used to do was go to the gym to take a yoga class, to take a step class. This was only... 25 30 years ago it's not that long ago and so we were like the team and I got together and we're like let's just do this there's the wheel let's just spin it in a different direction and let's do it better with better customer service let's keep it clean and make the classes just as good as orange theory or f45 or crossfit and let's find those coaches let's find those personalities um, which is the biggest task that there possibly can be is building that team. But well, let's talk about that. What yeah. do you look for when you're hiring somebody? Um, my top two questions are, have you ever played team sports? And the other one, what's the hardest thing that you've ever been through? And what did you learn from it? Um, because in my opinion, the team sport one is a huge one because all of us, all of our trainers, we're sort of running our own business all the trainers in there, they're, they're charging what they want to charge. And that client comes in, buys a membership, pays them. So one trainer may charge 85 an hour. The other one may charge 75 an hour. Um, but the big thing is, is so they're all run their own business, but you have to have mutual respect for each other. And we, and we got to the point, the core team's been together for eight years since my original gym on James Island, but we have about 15, 20 new trainers now and we, we've learned this philosophy. It's like when you go into the locker room, the, the juniors and seniors are telling the freshmen and sophomore, hey, this is how we do things on this team. And one thing that we came, like an issue was like, well, this trainer's not picking up his equipment after with their client. And it, this person pointing that finger, I said, no more pointing fingers. Like, 
I forget stuff all the time. You're going to forget something at one point. And it's like, just pick it up. We're, we're not going to do that. Who's got the better training program? Who's got the better nutrition plan? It's, it's not about that anymore. It, we can all learn from each other. And you can see, I mean, we've been through a lot of wrong ones. And you are going to go through a lot of wrong people. Um, but the right ones, they, you can see a little highlight, a little glimmer in their eye of, all right, I get it. Like, I want to help out. It's not just about me. You're not allowed to say that's not my job. Mm -hmm. Correct. I hate that. Um, so I know just like reading what you put out in your newsletter and from your social media, you, you read a lot and you obviously listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff. Is that a disciplined thing or is it just like you, you, that's what you've got books laying around and you, you know, tell us about all of that. The, I, I, um, parents have good hope with this. I hated book reports when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I despised reading everything. It wasn't until sophomore, junior year of college that I learned, oh, I just read a, I just picked up a book that I was interested in. I go, oh, I do like reading. It just has to be something that I'm interested in. And that was fitness, nutrition, and I love anything business. Like I love the ins and outs of how does that restaurant work? What are the margins? That retail place, how do you guys work with your team of salespeople? So it's like, that has always intrigued me. Um, but I am actually an extremely slow reader because I have to reread and highlight and, and to remember things. I'm not very good at um, retaining information. And same with podcasts. When I listen to a podcast, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to rewind that and listen to what they said and write that down. So, but no, the main thing I think I, that helps me too is I've learned over the years it's one of the most relaxing things that I can do. If I can find a morning where I can sip on a cup of coffee and read a book for 30 minutes, it is, it, it's just so nice with quiet and not talking to people. And so that helps me. Mm -hmm. I can't read at night though. It, I would last two pages and I'd fall asleep. So what are some of the misconceptions that people have about you? Um, I think a big one would, a lot of people think when I, a lot of my friends and people that just look, they're like, man, you must work out all the time. You must take all the classes and do all this stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not taking the class. I'm just walking around yelling at people <laughs> and you work out all day and things like that. But no, I'm, I work out five, six days a week and I'm, I love as much as I love being an extrovert and talking to people. I am, I think I'm a fake extrovert and you can talk to my fiance about that. So <laughs> I love getting on the couch and not talking to anybody and having my private time to myself. And so, yeah, I, I like sort of being alone hmm. a lot, but I am an only child, so I'm pretty used to it. I, so. I can get down with that fake <laughs> extrovert label. Um, I have a serious question. Are unattractive people just not allowed in the ethos or cause like everyone in there, man, women, children, old pe everyone's fucking beautiful. They, I think it's <laughs> Charleston. Well, uh, that's true. It's, it's a weird as long as I've lived here and, and the more people that move here, they're beauty successful, beauty, they're, yeah. they're healthy people. Um, but I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask cause I'm in there every day and I'm a little bit numb to it, but yes, my friend will come in from out of town and be like, what the hell the hell do I even work out in here? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I think, yeah, I don't know. Everybody's, everybody's attractive in their own way and it's, it's not meant to be that way. It, it's, it can be intimidating when you look at our social media, when you, when you see, when you walk in and see how big the place is, um, and you see everybody, there's not many mirrors and we did that on purpose is because we just don't want, please don't take offense to this 24 year old <laughs> Betty's out there, but we just don't want it to be an Instagram show of somebody just sitting in front of a mirror doing bicep curls or looking at their butt or anything like that. Like, it is super impressive what I'm blown away with and all the other trainers 
and we've been studying training for a while and people are in there and they are serious. They know what they're doing and it's not just men. The coolest thing is women like to watch women and how over the last five to 10 years, really last five, they're not afraid of barbells anymore. Like it used to be, I mean, the society would make you guys think that, Oh, you got to do yoga. You got to do Pilates. Like you're not supposed to touch heavy weights. Uh, you can't eat meat. Like, Blah, blah, blah. It is flipped in the last five years, seriously, a lot. And it's super impressive as a trainer and as a male to see how people, they're what, writing down their, their reps and their sets and they're doing, the, I'm like, how do they even know how to do that exercise? They're not a trainer. And so it, it's really cool. And, and I'm most proud to watch the females sort of develop into that and not to get rid of that fear of weights and mm -hmm. these type of exercises. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. um, who has had the most influence on you and what have you learned from them? Or are there a couple of people? Well, I mean, obviously mom and dad, yeah, they're, they're very, um, I, they're more similar in a way. They probably won't agree to that, mm -hmm. but they have a very calm composure mm -hmm. and I've been able to keep that sort of stoicism when, chaos happens and I try not to raise my voice or freak out like everything's going to be okay. Um, I have some coaches in my life from baseball, Coach Darnell and Johnny Cribb. And um, another one is Coach Rich. He's not a baseball coach, but he's our fighting coach at the gym. Um, but these are some very influential human beings. And Coach Darnell, who's my strength coach at the Citadel, um, I just watched them growing up for so many years. And some people even say that, no, Coach Darnell and I, and the way I teach a class, it's like you walk around and talk like him mm -hmm. and we're not related at all. And um, so, yeah, those are the people that I think of. And then ultimately my grandfather was, my dad's dad was one of the most outgoing he would walk up to you and, and within five minutes he'd have some kind of connection in your family or friends that come from his hometown in Norwich and <laughs> he would go to the before he passed away like he would go to the bank every day just to talk to the ladies at the bank he'd just <laughs> sit in their office and watching him and how he connected with people and put a smile on his face and would put a smile on their face is, I mean, that's ultimately what ethos is. If, if we had a mission statement to the simplest mis mission statement, it would be is how do we make someone's day better? That's it. How do we make your day better? It's as simple as that. So you're an introvert, but you genuinely love people. I mean, that's yes. what I am getting from mm -hmm. this. Yeah, you have to. I'm a flip. I wouldn't call myself an introvert, but I wouldn't call myself an extrovert yeah, yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same. Um, who inspires you? Like the, the podcast, the books, like I know you, you know, you said you read Entrepreneur, but like, do you have any like gurus or people that you're obsessed with? Like I, you, I love Jocko Willick, yeah. who's a former Navy SEAL and... I've read all of his books and I listen to his podcast and I mean, he's somebody that I look up to for discipline and motivation, the way he goes about living his life. He's a, seems to be a great family man, but also he's turned himself into an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, with, I mean, the guy owns like three or four different businesses now when it comes to supplements and books, um, podcast. And then I think he even owns a a clothing company that makes jeans and boots. And, and so that's really cool to see. Um, some local people would be Ben Tao, Kate Tao, um, with basic projects, watching them and how, how passionate they are about not only their restaurants, but designing their homes and commercial places that they're helping with. They help those, ethos. They made yeah. ethos look the way ethos looks. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's Brooks Wrights is another one. Cool. Like I just love Brooks is, I mean, I, I get to train him. I'm very fortunate about that. Cause we just talk shop all the time. And, mm -hmm. uh, he's, I remember him 
we were talking, he's like, how's it going when we were building out ethos? He goes, this is what I did when I built out little jacks, you need to do this at nighttime, like get away from the stress. And, Mm -hmm. um, so that's, those are some local people. I know there's plenty more that I'm missing. Sure. So what, then what, uh, what is next for you? So you've, you've built this thing, every, the, all the success came faster than I'm sure you anticipated. So will there be another ethos? Are you making protein shakes? Like what's next? Yeah, we have uh, all sorts of stuff that we're thinking of. We, I didn't really want to do another location, but I have a younger team and they're all like 25 to 32 and they are hungry as can be. And mm-hmm. they're our, our leadership team and management team. And, and they're like, let's figure out a way to do another one. Um, we've looked at everywhere from Nashville to Charlotte um, to Mount Pleasant. We even had somebody on John's Island, super curious if we could do something out there. So the opportunities are popping up. We're just trying to pick the right one. And I want to see the team. I want to give them an opportunity to grow and do another one and then also it'd be so cool i mean we got 1300 members down here it'd be so cool to you know inspire 1300 more mm-hmm. people somewhere but um apparel is one thing that we're sort of dabbling in and in the branding of ethos and making some cool stuff for women and men and it doesn't just have to be gym attire like they could wear a t-shirt with jeans and things like that mm-hmm. um we're playing with the supplement idea we we have um, actually we're like six months into learning about it. Um, we're very close to getting some samples of some stuff. Uh, wouldn't necessarily call it a protein, even though it has plenty of protein in it, but like more of a superfood mm-hmm. um, that hydrates you and um, gives you enough protein throughout the day. And it comes in, the goal would be to have a uh, non-dairy, a dairy product, and then also a uh, vegetarian. My product. only vote is that it doesn't taste like shit. No, we're put ri- that's that was what <laughs> I eat all day actually are things that taste like shit yeah. that people told me they're good for me. That Isn't it you know, funny how everything ugh, that tastes bad awful. is healthy for you. Why is that the case? <laughs> but you do like cheeseburgers. I have seen that on Love your Instagram. <laughs> yes. Um this is not a personal question, but like just coming from an entrepreneurial and starting your like what kept you up at night when you were starting your business and what keeps you up at night? however many years now into the business what are you afraid of yeah well there's a list of them (laughs) i remember so one huge mistake i made with ethos i haven't told it not many people know this but so when so we signed the lease on halloween so october 31st of 2020 so you have what's rent abatement so free rent to build out the space. And I think it was like six months or something like that. And me being super naive, I'm like, oh yeah, we can build a 20,000 square foot place in six Ha-ha. months. Yeah. And it's only <laughs> going to cost $500,000. When one of my mentors told me this long ago, and he owns the largest planet fitness franchise in the world, over a hundred of them. And he goes, whatever the cost is, double, double it. it. <laughs> whatever the time is, double it. Mm-hmm. And so what happened was is I forgot about the rent abatement. And so our landlord gives me a call one night. I'm going out to dinner on John's Island. And he gives me a call. He's like, all right, just to let you know, um, you owe rent. And I'm in, this is like May of 2021. And rent, he goes, rent's due. And I'm like, what do you mean rent's due? And he goes, yeah, you got to start paying rent. You're a, a week behind now. And I go, we're four or five months away from opening. We're not opening until November at this point. And it's May. And he's like, it's in the, he needs super kind about it. Nice about it. And he's like, yeah, I'm just letting you know. And so we already had to start paying starting in May, $30,000 a month. So yes, of rent. And we weren't open in May, June, July, August, September, So we're just, not only are we paying to build the place out, we are now paying rent um, on top of that. I'm going to lose sleep over this tonight. Yes, I was. And you think I'm bad. (laughs) Look what he did. That's just one thing. And then, I mean, there was everything from the tile in the bathrooms to air conditioning to, it it was the team. Like, 
getting members and Mm -hmm. it was a million things. Um, Things that I stay up about now, I'm pretty sure I have a really good perspective on things and to think how bad it was then, Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping great now. (laughs) Um, There's some, some little things, but nothing crazy. Just any entrepreneur or business owner thinks about with their team and you know, you gotta, I mean, when you're the boss, you gotta have some really tough conversations with people and some people that you've worked with in a long time. And you know, those, those will keep me up at night Mm -hmm. and and knowing that I have to have, Oh my gosh, I gotta have this conversation tomorrow. It could hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And and it sucks. You don't want to, I don't know if we can curse, but you don't want to be an asshole. Nobody likes that. And, but sometimes you have to be and the truth can sting. And Mm -hmm. that's, I would say that's the hardest thing right at the moment. It's the thing is that it was a benefit to you to be overconfident and naive and young because had you known that you were going to have all this shit to deal with, you might've not signed the contract. Oh no. I mean, when I have some of the women that have joined our team come in here and they're like, I'm going to sell a hundred million dollars a year and whatever. If I like halfway believe them, I'm like, she's going to be great. You know, I want them to be overconfident Mm -hmm. because it's hard. I mean, I, I don't know, like people probably come up to you and they're like, I want to start a gym somewhere. And you're probably like, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on yeah. a little bit. You're like, just get ready. It's tough. Yeah. And I think it's great. I love people that have that. I want some of my, tra- a couple of my trainers from the past have gone and started their own places. Mm-hmm. Two more just left and they're doing their cool thing in North Charleston. It's going to be great. I want them to do that. And I'm here to, I went up to North Charleston to give them some of my ideas and things like that. I think that's great. But yeah, when you get in, when you start thinking of the thick of it and and you get into the weeds, like my uncle said it best after, after we built it, he's from Boston and he flew down and, um, they walked through it for the first time. My aunt and uncle and I, and I go, I was like, uncle Keith, you see all the signage that's up and all the little stickers and things like that that cost fifty thousand dollars when you to- total it all up and he got and i had zero clue that i was going to spend fifty thousand dollars on signage um in the bathrooms and things like that and he goes well if you would have known that i could have prevented you from doing it totally so sometimes yes like you said it's good to be a little bit naive and, and you just have to jump in and learn as you go yeah I think it's also easy, like once you reach, you know, the stage, so to speak, of your business, um, that you're just like, oh, I can take my hands off the wheel and just let it coast. Um, And that can be very detrimental to Mm -hmm. some businesses. Are you the mindset of like, I'm comfortable, let's just roll with it or like constantly driving forward? Or do you have other people on your team going like, hey, we need to think about this and this and this to keep things fresh and new and not become yesterday's gem? Um, I would say... Out of everyone on the team, like the leadership team, I'm more of the one who's thinking about the next step. Um, But it's because of them that I can do that because they're managing the everyday business. Like Catherine's our, she's an equity owner partner in Ethos and she's our director of operations. Um, And then Katie Dellinger, who's our general manager, she's running everything from filling desk hours, knowing which trainers where, what classes are going on, um, who's teaching at the new recovery space. And then you have Chad, who's in unreal facilities and maintenance, anything that goes wrong. If it needs a paint job, this elliptical breaks, he is on it. And so I would never be able to think of the next step, apparel, supplements, another location, if it wasn't for them doing what they're doing. Yeah, you delegated and you're not bogged down with the day-to-day, so mm-hmm. you're free to think. I'm very, uh, without them, and some of those those two ladies, Catherine mm-hmm. and Katie, have been with me for four to six years now, mm-hmm. and, and they are, without those two women, I don't know where I would be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Awesome. Do you have anything else to add? We have requests to ask you about your personal life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's not much to it. I can tell you that. 
Well, you're getting married and that's a big deal. I know that you were an eligible bachelor. I mean, I'm too old for this, but so you were an eligible bachelor in Charleston for a long time. So what is it about this person that um, caught your attention and took you off the market? Oh, wow. Well, that's kind of easy. She, uh, well, number one, you, I can't lie about aesthetics. She's like, hot. Yeah, she's hot, but her eyes. Mm. I mean, she looks like a white walker. Her <laughs> eyes are so blue. So that was the first thing that I, I noticed about her. And then when I got to know her, um, her drive, she's an orthopedic PA. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't own a business. Um, she doesn't own that practice or anything. She works for East Cooper and her doctors and her drive and passion for her job. It was like, how are you so passionate about something that you don't even own? Like, I don't get it. I get what I do mm -hmm. and in, in starting something, but watching her and her daily disciplines of everything from being great at her job to working out like I asked her one time she, if I'm not the workout person, she's, she's the one that works out more than I do. And I'm like, what's your motivation? She goes, I don't know what motivation is. It's, I just, I can't live my day without working out. It's just mm -hmm. like brushing my teeth. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, and just her being, she's a way better person than I am. Just her soul is unbelievable. And, and, and that is just inspiring. Like I was down here. Oh, I guess we're not on video. I don't know. We're yeah, on we podcast. <laughs> I was very low and she's bringing me up. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah, That's thank very you. very exciting. Anyway, well, Joey, thank you so much for coming on. No, this is thank, awesome. This thank is great. Thank you for everything that you do for our community and for caring about people so much. I mean, there's no question that you have changed many lives and that people are inspired to go to the gym every day. Half our team, more than half yeah. our team, I think, is. Yeah, think it's really, numbers. it's really a wonderful place. Well, thank yeah. you guys for supporting it. it. It was, I just put the canvas out there. You guys are the ones painting on it. So, it's, <laughs> thank you so and much. And tell everybody where to find you. I mean, are you even accepting new members at Ethos? Apply for your <laughs> 2025 Mount Pleasant uh, yeah, no. <laughs> membership. Yeah, no. we're always accepting. It's, we want as many people in that place as possible. With, but um, it's very challenging. For our team, the, it, it's a great problem to have. Yeah, exactly. Like we have a lot of people, but keeping the quality up is tough when you get more and more people in there. But we're always, we want as many people as possible. So, so. what's your website and Instagram? Um, the website is ethosathleticclub.com. Um, same, no, the Instagram is ethos underscore AC. And then I'm just Joey Welling on yes. Instagram. Don't do anything with Facebook because I don't even have the app anymore. <laughs> but I think I'm still on there. So... Yes. Well, awesome. Thanks for coming. Thanks Thank for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.